All right, so now we are officially down. Um, you've gone through um, actually completing page one of your Parallel Circuits Lab. So if you're done with your page one of Parallel Circuits Lab, this is the video you're going to want to be watching. So let me pull up my iPad so I can show you what's going on here. So currently we're looking at this idea of parallel circuits. So parallel circuits are, once again, um, like what you see on here, a situation where um, the electrons flow down, they have a junction, and then they have multiple paths they can take. And when they have multiple paths, then they return back to the battery. So our goal is to figure out what kind of conclusions we can draw about um, our voltages, so about our voltages, about our current values, which are going to be these guys, and how they all are related to what we see as our equivalent resistance and equivalent circuit. So um, I, it's a little weird. If you look at this data and you look at what you were coming up with for your circuits, it's a little weird for a, a parallel circuit. Because if you take a look, you can see that we have this 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 6 ohm resistor. But our equivalent resistance is actually smaller. It's kind of weird. But the idea is that you're actually creating down each of these branches. You're able to process through more electrons, more current, because they split up like that. So by, by being able to really split that up and have all of these different current values down those branches, when you create an equivalent circuit, in order to maintain that same 4 amp current, you actually need to have, for that one branch, a really, really low resistor. Now it brings up the next piece. If I want my resistor over here, my equivalent resistance to be smaller, so the equivalent resistance to be smaller than the other resistance values, we want to think about what we can do. What can we do mathematically to make that happen? So when we think about things getting smaller, we think division, we think subtraction. So it's kind of a little unique, but what we actually use here is what we call um, our, our, um, our inverse or, um, or negative one kind of relationship. I'll show you what that looks like. So if I take each of my resistors, so let's kind of go, I'm going to do this as an example problem up here. If I take each of my resistors over here and I add them up, but instead of just adding them up, I add up what we call their inverses. So instead of having just a 1 ohm, we're going to take the inverse of 1 plus 2 inverse plus 6 inverse. Now an inverse just means 1 over. So if I'm looking at this number, it's going to be um, 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 6. So if we keep on going, we want to add up our fractions, we want to have a common denominator. So I'm going to have 6 over 6 plus 3 over 6 plus 1 over 6. And what that will give me is 10 over 6. But if you take a look, I actually want the inverse of that. I actually want, point, I want 6 over 10 for my equivalent resistance instead of the 10 over 6. So what we actually do with all of this is we actually take the inverse of these inverses added together. So in other words, my equivalent resistance for the circuit should end up being the inverse of 10 over 6. So an inverse just means flip it. So what's on the bottom becomes on the top, and what's on the top goes to the bottom. In other words, it becomes 6 over 10. So if you're still kind of not following this very much, let me see if I can go and summarize this real quick in just an equation form. So my equivalent resistance is going to end up being RA inverse plus RB inverse plus RC inverse. And then we want to take the inverse of the entire function. So um, that's, we're going to keep practicing one more time with this kind of idea, and then we'll go from there. We'll see what, what's going on. So once again, our equivalent resistance equation for parallel looks very different than our series. It actually involves this idea of, of coming up with the equivalent resistance that's smaller. Now let's look at some of our other patterns that we can experience from our parallel circuit. So let's look at our current values. If you look at the current down each of our branches, you'll see that we have 2.4, 1.2, and 0.4. What you'll notice is that for each resistor, as the resistance gets bigger, 
the current gets smaller for each of these branches. In fact, the smallest resistance was the 1 ohm, which had the biggest current. The reason being is fewer electrons are able to go down and want to go down when there's a high resistance. And we also notice that our current over here is going to be 4 amps. So if we look at each of these currents, they actually all add up to be 4. In other words, the current running down each of these individual branches is equal to the current running through the battery. So let's see if I can kind of summarize that. Current through the source is equal to the current down each battery added together, or so each resistor added together. So current down the, the A branch plus the current down the B plus the current down the C. The other thing you can notice when you're looking at this too is let's go through and look at our voltages. Kind of weird. Our voltage drops are actually all exactly the same as our battery. 2.4 volts. In other words, um, and I can explain this more in class later on, but in other words, the thing that stays the same for a, for a parallel circuit is our voltages. My voltage through A is equal to my voltage through B, which is equal to my voltage through C. So what I want to do is apply all these ideas to our problems. So let's scoot down there and take a look. So I have this resistor here, two resistors actually in parallel, 10 ohm and 5 ohm. And I want to create an equivalent resistance here. My equivalent resistance is going to end up being that inverse value. So to find my REQ, my REQ is equal to the inverse of 10 plus the inverse of 5 and then the inverse of the entire thing which is going to be 1 over 10 plus 1 over 5 inverse. And you can actually do all this in your calculator if you'd like, if you don't, want to, if you don't feel as comfortable with the, with the fractions. If I find a common denominator of 10, I get 1 over 10 plus 2 over 10 inverse, which then gives me 1 tenth plus, plus my um, 2 tenths, which is 3 tenths, Inverse of 3 tenths gives me 10 over 3 ohms. So in other words, my equivalent resistance for this circuit is going to be 10 over 3, or 3.33 ohms. To find my current running through my battery, I'm going to use my vert equation. And really, when we use this, we like, at this point, whenever we look at going through our battery and our power by our battery, we use our equivalent resistance, our equivalent circuit, to figure that out. So voltage through our battery equals current through our battery times our equivalent resistance. In other words, our Burr equation. 5 volts equals Is times 10 over 3. If I divide both sides by the 10 over 3, or like I said, you can do this in fraction form too. I divide both sides by 10.3. It's actually the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this cancels out, and I'm left then with a current value Oops, oh, sorry, I messed that up. Flip that around the wrong way. It should be times 3 over 10. A current value then, that is going to be equal to 15 over 10, which simplifies down to um, R3 over 2. Now, with this in mind, we want to go through and figure out information about our power. So my power in this case is my PIV. So the power of my battery is just going to be 3 over 2 times my 5 volts. So my power will end up being 15 over 2 or 7.5 watts. All right, now the key piece when we look at our next piece is now what we want to do is look at each of our resistors and my voltage drop across each of those resistors is going to be the same as the battery. This is the key piece when it comes to our parallel circuits. So 5 volts and 5 volts. 
So now if I want to find the current running through that 10 ohm resistor, I'm just going to want to use my VER equation. And if I, if I solve for just my I, it's just going to be V divided by my R. So my current down my battery for the, the 10 ohm is just 5 volts divided by 10 ohms, and I get 1 half of an amp. Now, I know again over here on the other side, if I have it half of the resistance, I'm going to have double the current. So to prove that, I could actually go through and solve for my current on my 5 ohm resistor. V divided by R, just like we used over here. So it's just going to be 5 volts divided by 5 ohms, which is just going to be 1 amp. So let's go through and plug that in. The current through my battery we found to be 3 over 2. And 3 over 2 is actually the same as just 1.5 amps. The current down my 10 ohm resistor is 0.5 amps, and down my 5 ohm is just 1 amp. So as we saw, and as we showed before, my currents running through each of my ba batteries, or sorry, resistors, adds up to be equal to the, the current running through our battery. So 1 plus, one, one plus 0.5 gives me 1.5. The other thing we concluded up above, as you look at this, is that my, re my, my voltages are going to be the same. So I can plug that into this, this um, org chart right away too. So the last thing we have now is just looking at our power. So in other words, let's look at finding our power dissipated by our, our 10 ohm resistor. So use our PIV equation. Power is equal to our current of 1 half times our voltage of 5, which is 5 over 2. And 5 over 2 is going to be the same thing as our, um, so 5 divided by 2 gives you 2.5 watts. On the flip side, for our, um, for our 5 ohm resistor, we end up having a current now of 1 amp, we found over here, times my voltage, which is still going to be 5 volts. So my power is actually going to be double as much as my 10 ohm resistor with my 5 watts. So 2.5 and my 5. So we can plug that in, 2.5 and 5. Now, um, once again, carrying with the same kind of conclusions, the power that we created by our battery, which we found to be 7.5 watts, is going to be equal to the power dissipated or used up by my two resistors. So in other words, the power of our battery is going to be equal to the power of our resistors. So I can draw that as my final conclusion. Power generated by my source or my battery equals the power um, dissipated by each of my resistors. All right, so the last thing you're going to do now that you've gone through this problem and you have this problem done is you're going to go through and do the same thing for problem number one, problem number two. Exactly the same setup. And in fact, if you want to check your answers, you can actually go up here and verify the answers you have up here because these, um, these resistors are actually the same as the one that you're working through in your problem set. So once you're done with all of this, you're going to go through and submit this. Um, but basically, at this point, um, you're done with this piece. Finish your D discovering um, parallel circuits um, worksheet, and then submit that using the submission form. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have questions, and hopefully you'll be on the right track.